Apostolic Christian Assembly, Perambu Ministries welcomes you for Thought for the Night Devotion. God bless you as you prayerfully listen to this brief devotion. Greetings to you this evening in the loving name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As Christians, we are called to love everyone, even our enemies. It's a tremendous blessing to be set free from hatred by the understanding that Christ died to make us free from all evil. When we love, we cannot hate. Hate is a sin that is very much seen in the world, the home, even the church. It leads to slander, envy, strife, murder. It can be traced right from the very beginning in the book of Genesis, when Cain and Abel brought their offerings to God. And the Lord accepted the offering of Abel, but with Cain he was not pleased. This led Cain to hate his brother and resulted in murder. The enemy's strategy is to put hatred amongst the believers and destroy the fellowship that they can enjoy one with another. But the Bible says we are not ignorant of his devices. Therefore, we need to overcome every evil by doing good. For our devotion this evening, let's read Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 12. Hatred stirred up strifes, but love covered all sins. Two things are compared in this verse. They are hatred and love. We also see what they eventually will yield. If we need something that will aid us in having good relationships with one another, this verse should help us in a great way to maintain a wonderful fellowship with one another in the body of Christ. And that is never to hate, but to love. When God created us, He did not create us to hate one another, but God created each one of us to love one another. It is Satan who wants us to hate one another instead of loving each other in the body of Christ. The Bible says in John chapter 13 and verse 34, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. With hatred in my heart, I will never be able to live at peace with my fellow brother sister in the body of Christ. And I cannot say that I love God who I cannot see, when I hate my brother who I can see. Usually the manifestation of hatred is that it leads to dissension and unrest between two people and often a broken relationship. Hatred may begin as a feeling, but soon hatred will bring us to a choice. The choice that is illustrated here is that of strife. When someone has hatred in the heart, strife and discord cannot be far behind. Strife is a tool that the enemy uses against God's people to destroy the unity. When strife comes, it brings division, disharmony, tears relationships apart. Many times we allow strife to enter, we open the door to it through a small argument and when we major on it, it destroys our relationships, tears apart our marriage and our family relationship. Lifelong friendships have been destroyed over one small disagreement. That's what strife does. When we allow strife into our life, something is happening. It's destroying our fellowship with one another in the body of Christ. If you're going to keep strife out of your life, you've got to get good at walking away from it. There will be time when you know that you are right the other person is wrong. But in order to maintain the bond of unity in the body of Christ, we need to humble ourselves and we need to keep the peace with one another in the body of Christ. The Bible says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. When you allow God to do it His way, He will change what needs to be changed. We can't change people, only God can change them. When you feel like telling somebody off, will you just put your ego down and let somebody else be right? even when you know they are wrong. When you go the extra mile to keep strife out, that's not being weak. It's a sign of strength and maturity. The most mature person is the one who walks away from the argument. You know what argument really boils down to? It's pride. If you have pride in your life, you cannot reflect the divine nature of Jesus Christ in your life. You need to put your ego down and say, I'd rather have peace in my life than to have strife. We can choose a deal with hatred by putting an end to strife in a biblical way, which is the second half of this proverb relates to us. The second half of this proverb tells us that love covers all sin. The words used here are very expressive. The love that is mentioned here is not human love, but divine love. This kind of love is selfless love. When we love like this, it covers all sins. The Hebrew word for cover is kasa, which means to clothe or conceal something. This is not the cover-up that we often refer to when speaking of illegal activity but it is love that does not expose someone's sins to other people, but instead it overlooks them. 
I do not major on the faults that someone has done to me, but rather I am able to freely forgive them and not make an open show of what they have done so that I can maintain my fellowship with one another in the body of Christ. The most blessed way we can see this truth illustrated is by God himself with sinful mankind. We have chosen rebellion and disobedience, even hatred of the things of God. Yet God manifested his love in Christ Jesus. He chose to love us and to freely forgive us for all the wrongs that we did to him. Christ died for each one of us on the cross of Calvary. This is a love in its most glorious form, that love covers all sins and makes it possible for grace to bring salvation to men. As we have reaped the glorious benefits of salvation from God's grace, may we also reap the blessings of dawning His character in our response to the mistake of other people. This is a way to maintain a right fellowship with one another in the body of Christ. Think of the life of Joseph. He was hated, sold as a slave. He suffered much affliction. But when standing before his brethren, exalted by God, he had all the power to take revenge on them. The Bible says he spoke kindly to them. This is what God expects from each one of us. When people wrong us, when people speak evil against us, the more and more I have Christ dwelling in me, I can reflect the divine love of Jesus Christ. The world doesn't want to see a professing Christian, but the world wants to see one who lives the life of Christ. And may this be your prayer this evening. Lord, fill my heart with your divine love, that I will not give room for hatred, strife and contention, but rather I will freely love people because you have loved me. Therefore, I want to reflect your divine nature in and through my life. May God bless you. May God be with you. Amen.